Welcome everybody, my name is Michael and today we're discussing about El Salvador's opposition party going against President Nayib Bukele. He is the man who is behind the Bitcoin bet where he wanted to legalize it and be the first nation that fully accepts it as currency. Well, El Salvador's opposition party to Bukele has filed a lawsuit against him and this new Bitcoin law. Uh, they are, well, it is the deputy leader of the Farabundo Martin Nacional. National Liberation Front, uh, they have joined forces with citizens opposing Bukele's Bitcoin law. And a lot of people think that it is a great law. It's just that the person who put it into action, there's a little bit of corruption and he may not be the best person to go forward with it. So Jamie Guevara has filed a lawsuit and he's joined forces with a group of Salvadoran citizens uh, that argue that it's unconstitutional. I bring a lawsuit of unconstitutionality against the decree issued by the Bitcoin law for being a decree lacking legality, lacking foundation, without considering the significance and harmful effects that such a law will cause to this country, a citizen named Oscar Oster Artero said. Advocates of the Bitcoin law, of course, disagree. Jack Mallers, CEO of Payments App Strike, believes that the Bitcoin law will usher in a new age of financial inclusivity and human freedom. The Bitcoin law is to loot people's pockets. It is tax exempt. They want to force us to trade, Artero added. According to El Mundo, Guevara and his colleagues are not the only ones opposed to Bukele's Bitcoin law. The Salvadoran outlet cites a survey by the Salvadoran Chamber of Commerce and Industry, which found that 80% of Salvadorans would not agree to receive payments in Bitcoin. Uh, fears over the Bitcoin law being designed to loot people's pockets come from a history of significant corruption in both public and private Salvadoran life. Per data shared by The Economist, El Salvador's hybrid regime led the way among all of Latin America, all the states in Latin America, in the decline to authoritarianism in 2020. What's more, Transparency International's Corruption's Perceptions Index, that's a mouthful, uh, scored El Salvador's handling of corruption as low as 36 out of 100 last year. The U.S. label, uh, the U.S. has labeled five of Bukele's aides as corrupt, and it adds credence to the numbers. So that's not great, but hey, at least the U.S. didn't label Bukele himself as corrupt. Obviously, the uh, more powerful you are, you're going to get your little henchmen around you to do all the nefarious deeds that you ask them to. So on another website, we see a little bit of competition certainly never hurts the incumbents. Paul Brody, who heads the Global Blockchain Technology Division at Ernst & Young, uh, I don't see this as being unusually harmful, but I'm hard-pressed to see it as kind of a cure-all. Bukele said he hopes that making Bitcoin legal tender will attract badly needed new investment and create jobs, while also hoping that it will provide financial inclusion to thousands outside the formal economy. Uh, remittances from its citizens living abroad, estimated at $5.9 billion last year, make up about a fifth of El Salvador's GDP, its gross domestic product. Companies like Western Union and MoneyGram are reaping big profits from delivering the mostly small amounts sent back to its citizens living inside. Uh, Bukele says using Bitcoin could vastly reduce that delivery cost, bringing large savings for low-income families as long as fees are low. Yeah, sure, I guess so. Uh, in Central America's smallest and most densely populated country of about 6.5 million inhabitants. It's also one of the most dangerous. Hmm. Now, there are some risks to converting El Salvador to Bitcoin. It definitely has some advantages, uh, but it's complicated. It's a risky move. El Salvador is already facing higher interest rates as international investors are worried about the move, uh, in part due to the volatility of Bitcoin. There's a lot of institutional investors that are still scared by it. Uh, remitted service providers and transfer operators need a currency that is stable and tradable, and Bitcoin is not, says Manuel Orozco. He's the director of the Center for Migration and Economic Stabilization. Well, obviously, someone who works in such a department would be against very volatile assets. Uh, the World Bank said Wednesday that it cannot help the implementation of Bitcoin in El Salvador given environmental and transparency shortcomings. Oh my god, that's just the silliest excuse. Environmental shortcomings, oh yes. Bitcoin miners use too much energy. 
Bukele has opened the doors to several Bitcoin entrepreneurs, including Peter McCormick. He's the host of the What Bitcoin Did podcast, who posed for an official photo in the president's office wearing a Metallica t-shirt. I mean, that's pretty cool. Eh? I mean, look at that. That's kind of cool. I would want to do that. Yeah, laser eyes. I'd kind of want to do that. Pose for a picture. Yeah. Bukele has changed himself on Twitter to the laser eyes. He's a self-styled political outsider. He's won public support by reducing crime, and he is still definitely a symbol among uh, Bitcoin advocates. However, he is authoritarian in certain circumstances. Critics accuse him of offering this as a publicity stunt to distract from criticism by human rights groups and the U.S. government for some of his most recent authoritarian moves, including the recent ouster of the country's attorney general and top judges. It's hard to understand the motivations of Bukele. It looks like an innovative idea. It aligns with his image as being a hipster, a cool person. El Salvador is not South Korea. It doesn't make much sense in a country where poverty is rampant and most people don't have bank accounts, how people will navigate a system that is completely electronic and virtual in a country where people don't have their, well, where people have their savings under the mattress seems pretty crazy. It feels like we're watching a very fast moving movie. We need to start thinking through things a little bit more thoughtfully. Something is going to happen and we are going to be propelled 10 steps backwards. I'll take the red tape of bureaucratic processes over the bristling speed of autocracy most days. Volcanoes are part of El Salvador's national identity and are even reflected in the flag that shows a row of five peaks rising above the Pacific Ocean. 100% renewable, zero emissions energy from our volcanoes. That's the plan. I don't know how that's going to work, but maybe. Uh, every economic agent must accept Bitcoin as payment, according to the Bitcoin law, and uh, there's geothermal capacity. It's one of the top 12 geothermal energy producers in the world. There's 23 active volcanoes, and that gives it an abundant, albeit relatively untapped geothermal energy capacity, which has been utilized since 1975. El Salvador does have less to lose than other nations in adopting a second currency as its legal tender, uh, and it also announced the U.S. dollar as its legal tender uh, in 2001. It's abandoned its own currency, the colon. Uh, so adopting Bitcoin has no impact on its monetary autonomy or ability to control currency value. Bukele assures that his government will assume the risk for the fluctuation of the value of Bitcoin and announced the creation of a $150 billion fund in the country's development bank to automatically exchange the Bitcoins of uh, Salvadorans who wish to do so. But that raises other issues. It is a fallacy to say that the exchange risk will be assumed by the government and not the people because the government is financed with taxes coming from who? From the people. Analysts fear that betting on Bitcoin will complicate talks with the International Monetary Fund in the midst of negotiations over a $1.4 billion aid package. And there's also fears of money laundering, but that happens with all types of currencies around the world. So that's that. What do you think about El Salvador? Uh, we did not report on this yet, as now there's more news coming out, and I guess there's a little bit more negative news. We will see. As time goes on, we will see. Uh, Bukele is still president, so I think that it is going to go into action. Obviously, there's always controversial laws, and there's always going to be an opposing party, but hopefully all goes well. Uh, I am optimistic when it comes to stuff like this. I think, um, sure, even if it is a publicity stunt, I think it's a pretty cool publicity stunt. Yes, there are some concerns. Yes, probably not many people will be using Bitcoin in this country, but we have to look towards the future. They're poor right now, but what happens in 50 years? Because a lot of people are very short-sighted with Bitcoin. Oh, what's going to happen over the next year? But this is a cryptocurrency that is going to gain in value because it's basically going against inflation. It's inflation-proof, and we have to look at this stuff for the next few decades or even the next, the rest of this century. A lot of people don't care about that. They're looking at short-term gains. No, 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 no. That's not why we're in cryptocurrency. I mean, that's a little bit of it. You know, you're always able to have some fun. But once you've had your fun, start looking long-term over the next few decades. What Bitcoin can do for you, your family, your country, everybody. So that's that. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, join us for more videos. We're posting on a, sale, a daily basis. I'm going to work now, and uh, yeah, I wish I could make more videos, but uh, I have to prepare. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to edit this and upload it at night. Bye.